Hello and welcome again. So now in this video, we're going to talk about this new concept called uh, the congruence, which is also important for the kind of public cryptography that we're going to do later. Now, this is also a concept of number theory. And then as you can see here from the last videos, we have been doing a lot of number theory. But this is just a, a lot of preparation to be able to actually get into the details of the some of the public key cryptography algorithms that we're going to see. So what is this congruence here? So the congruence here is starts like this. So you have two integers, a and b. So that's what this notation here means. I have a and b that are integers. And I have some other a number, which is a natural number. That's what this notation means here. Now, we're going to say that the, this number a, the number a, is congruent to the number b modulus this number. So now we are involving three numbers here. Two of them are integers, a and b, and n is a natural number. I could also have n to be an integer. Now, that's for the sake of keeping it simple, let's just uh, think about n as a natural number here. So there are three numbers here, and we're going to say that two of them are congruent modulus the other number if the following happens. If you take these numbers b and a, you subtract and that difference is divisible by this number. This is what the notation here means. So n divides the difference of the two numbers. So, so whenever this happens, this means that this number a is congruent to the number b modulus n. So this is just uh, a concept in number theory, which is actually very important in number theory. Uh, and it is also important for us in cryptography. So again, two numbers are congruent, and if you take the difference, it is divisible by number n there. Now, this whole thing, this sentence here that says a is congruent to b modulus n, we're going to simplify it and just write it down like this with this symbol. These three bars that you see here, they look very similar to an equality, and it actually behaves a little bit like inequality, but not quite. So we're going to read it congruent. So you say a is congruent to be modulus n. And this notation that is here exactly means what this notation here is, is that this number here divides the difference b minus a, or a minus b. It really doesn't matter what order you put the numbers here. So this is uh, the notation, a, and then read these three lines that are here parallel, congruent to be modulus n. Now, what is the meaning of all this? This has a, a very particular meaning, and it is like this. When you write down this a congruent to b modulus n, what that means is that a and b leave the same remainder when divided by n. So that's exactly what this means here. So if I take the number a and divide it by n, that's going to leave me some remainder. And if I take the number b and I divide it by n, that's going to leave me some remainder. If those remainders are exactly the same, it means that the numbers a and b are congruent modulus the number n. Okay, so let's see examples here and see how this works. So, so here I have uh, some uh, statements. So the statement here says that uh, number 5 is congruent to the number 2 modulus 3. Now, how do I know that? The reason I could check that is, let's see, is that's because if this were 2 true, it means that this number 3 will divide this difference this number minus this number, or in any order. It doesn't really matter what order you put, put it. So 3 divides uh, 5 minus 2, or 2 minus 5, if you want to uh, be here, uh, I'll put it in this, in this way here, a minus b. So the first one minus the second one. So 5 minus 2. And as you can see there, uh, 5 minus 2 is actually 3. So 3 divides 3, so this is actually correct. So this is correct. So what that means is that this statement here that I have is true. It means that 5 is congruent to 2 modulo 3. And as you can see here, both numbers leave remainder 2 when you divide it by 3. Okay, so how about the next statement? The next statement is saying that 14 is congruent to 2 modulo 4. What that means is that 4, if this statement is true, then 4 should divide 14 minus 2. So let's see if that is correct. As you can see there, so this is, why is that true? That's because then if that were true, then this number here, the modulus should divide uh, the difference of the numbers 14 
minus 2. And as you can see here, this is also true because 14 minus 2 does 12 and 4 divides 12. So this statement is also true. The next statement will also be true. So the next statement, what it's saying is negative 1 is congruent to 2 modulus 3. And let's see why. Okay, this is because if this statement here were to be true, it means that this number should divide this minus this number here. And it actually does because 3 divides, the first number is negative 1. I subtract the second number and what I have here, negative 1 minus 2, that's negative 3. And of course, 3 divides negative 3. So all these statements are true. 5 is congruent to 2 modulo 3, 14 is congruent to 2 modulo 4, and negative 1 is congruent to 2 modulo 3. And the reason be that is those statements are true is because of this. Now this is just the definition. Here we are using exactly the definition. So A congruent to B modulo N, it means that this, the modulus divides the difference of the numbers. So that's the concept of congruence, and we will, we will use this later. Now, one of the important things about this symbol congruence is that symbol, as you can read there, behaves as an equal sign most of the time. And by most of the time, I mean that it looks like it is an equal sign, but there are some properties of equality that are not shared with the congruence uh, symbol, with this symbol here. So let's look at some properties that actually uh, uh, are true for both equality and congruence. So let's, these are the properties. So let's assume, for example, that I have A congruent to B modular N. And let's think just for a second that this congruence is just an equality. Now, inequalities, as you probably know from algebra, when you have something that a number is equal to another, you can multiply by a number on both sides and the equality is still true, which is this a, a statement that is right here. So if I take A congruent to B modulus N, I multiply by an integer C on both sides, and that is still true. Now it is also true for equality. If you have two numbers are equal, you take the K power on both sides, and the equality is also true. That is also true for congruence. So if A is congruent to B modulo N, it is also true that A to the K is congruent to B to the K modulo N. And that's for any uh, natural power. So in this case, we won't allow K to be uh, rational of a negative number. We just want uh, natural number powers in this case. And as you remember also from algebra, if you have an equality, then you can add or subtract the same number on both sides and it won't change. Exactly the same happens for congruence. If you take C and you add it on both sides, the this statement is still true. And if you subtract, that statement will also be true. And that is for any integer C here. So, so far, as you can see, this congruence symbol behaves almost exactly as inequality, but there is a little problem with cancellation. So in cancellation, the cancellation actually doesn't happen. Now, this is true for equality. If you have A times C congruent to B times C, and Z here, this guy, is not equal to zero, you can cancel. Now, that is not true for uh, congruence. And what I mean by that is this. I can have this A times C congruent to B times C modulo N, having C not equal to zero, and I cannot not cancel the C and say that, conclude that A is congruent to B. So let's see this property. I have three times two is congruent to four times two, modulo two. And you actually check that that's gonna be correct because three times two is six, four times two is eight. The difference between those numbers is negative two. And of course, a two divides negative two. Now, but if you try to cancel here, if I cancel this two and I cancel this two, I will be left with the statement three congruent to four modulo two. And that statement is not true because two does not divide this number three minus four, which is negative one. So cancellation doesn't happen here. Now, this is a very particular example I put in here. Now this, you can actually manipulate these kinds of things and actually get some other example with this number here. Two is not this number two that is, is in here. So this happens um, 
this happens for other examples. This is not the only one. So congruence acts like it is an inequality, but you have to be careful when you cancel on both sides, you have to make sure uh, that there's some extra property that uh, happens. You can cancel, but there is something else that has to happen. Now, so that's kind of like an introduction to congruence. And then we needed to do this because we need to use this congruence symbol later, which is gonna be using the RSA uh, encryption algorithm. So I'm gonna stop the video now and I will see you in the next video.